Hi everyone, so welcome back to the Low Coding. So today video, I'm going to talk about things that I just learned after taking the Next.js course. Next.js just released a new course and I just completed it. And surprisingly, I just learned a lot of things. And surprisingly, some of the feature that exists before, I actually never use it. So after taking that course, I learned a lot. So I'm going to share with you the thing that I just learned. And all of that thing is actually exists before, but I just never use it or use it the wrong way. So starting out by styling. So I'm a big fan of Tailwind and I always use it. We're going to use this class name and it's used to smoothing the font. I'm not seeing much of the difference, but that's what the, uh, the, the course said. But yeah, so that's a good thing to know as well. Another thing is uh, what is partial rendering. So if you don't know, uh, partial rendering is uh, the way that we render the page so for example if you have a dashboard and we have a layout and of the dashboard and each dashboard will have different route right so if you render each route of the dashboard and the layout is still the same it's called partial rendering so we render uh, all, all a partial of the route we not render everything so because the layout is there so we not render it so but we render partial of it so here's some example so you can see the layout is still there and then, but the page we have some loading. So we render those paths. So that is what is called partial rendering. Another thing is called uh, waterfall fetching and how to fix it. So waterfall fetching is the way that we fetch data. So for example, you have uh, two functions that fetch data inside the page. So waterfall fetching, it will fetch all of that. And then after that, the page is rendered. So the problem with waterfall fetching is that if one of the function is slow, it will block the whole page. So, but in some case, waterfall fetching is also great uh, as well, because let's say the second function is depend on the first function. So it makes sense to do waterfall fetching, but if it's not the case, so if you do waterfall fetching and one of the function is slow and then it will block the whole page. So the way that we fix uh, this waterfall fetching and prevent the page slow, uh, because of the fetching. So we can pass all the function to each individual components to do the fetching. So, and then we can wrap around those components with subspan and then, so, and then we can do some loading and fall back to it. So, but in that situation, we going to solve the problem of slow fetching and it will not block the component. So if one of the fetching is faster, so it will show first and the other fetching is slow, it will show some loading. So this will enhance the user experience and it's part of call, it's called streaming as well. So we're using subspan and then we stream the content that is ready and it's not ready, we can just put in on, on the loading. So another thing that has surprised me is route grouping. So I actually never know how to use it before and after taking the course, I just learned <laughs> Uh, about it. So let's say if you have a layout, uh, a, a dashboard layout, and then inside the dashboard, we have different route, right? But, and you, you, you want to have the loading page that the loading page for the specific home page of the dashboard. So if you don't group that, it, the, that loading will apply to all of the pages, uh, sub pages inside the dashboard. You do that. You need to group and that page uh, inside a folder and it works something like this. You add the parentheses to it and then you add some uh, your loading file. So it will apply to that route only. It's not applied to the sub route. And yeah, I actually never know how to use it. So thank you. Another thing is to use debound. So what is it? So imagine if you building a search, so on every keystroke that you type, you will fire the fetching request to the API. So if you type fast, like really fast, so it will fetch every keystroke of it. So every 10 words uh, will fetch. So it will like spamming to the server. So another way that we can um, improve this one, we can use debound to delay the request to the API. So for example, if you search the name, so uh, so we can delay, let's say for example, this function right here will delay for every uh, 300 millisecond. And after that, it will fire the request. So it will not immediately fire the request on every keystroke. So this is safe the performance and also safe the, uh, you know, the request to the API as well. So another thing is uh, how to use the server action. So now server action is stable in Nexus 14. So by taking the course, you will learn how to use the server action. There's nothing surprising me in that. So it's just a new information and I just learn how to use it as well. Yeah. So um, I think that's all that surprised me that I just learned. So there's a lot of things inside the course. It uh, talking uh, how to use server components. Um, has so our actions, uh, do authentication, and also do data fetching. There's a lot of things. So if you are currently learning Next.js or um, improving and learn, want to keep update with the Next.js new version, you should uh, taking that course. And there's a whole lot of things and uh, 
you miss you will surprise and you will learn a lot from that course so i'm really enjoy taking that course and yeah so hopefully you enjoy this video also in the next video i'm currently building the dashboard that inspired by that course but this time i use it to build it with uh, super base and so yeah i'm currently done only 50 percent of it so i will uh, try to push it for a new video so we can build it together we'll be building a dashboard user management you with super base there's a role the user can edit uh, admin can create user and stuff like that so i'm really excited for that so hopefully you enjoy this video and don't forget to share and don't forget to subscribe and keep learning enjoy see you in the next video